Hello. Today, I am in a low mood. Now, by a low mood, I don't mean I am depressed. I am not clinically depressed. I am, however, in a low mood, which means that my thoughts tend toward the negative. My energy level is lower than usual. I may not particularly show it, though there may be subtle signs, like a smile does not come as easily to my face as it might usually. And what I'm here to demonstrate today is that you can be in a low mood and one, not act like it, two, remain productive, and three, not do violence to who you are. Okay, so let's break those down. One, not acting like I'm in a low mood. Well, so my mind says, gee, crummy day, kind of cloudy, cloudy, not in a very good mood, think I'll curl up in bed and play a video game or something along those lines until I have to go to work. Or <clears throat> maybe I'll just sit here and think about all the things I don't like about the world, both bright ideas from my mind. But that's not what I chose to do. Instead, I got online and read a couple things, watched a couple interesting videos, and got a couple ideas. And then I decided to make this video, turned on my camera, and proceeded. So that's one. Don't necessarily need to act the same as your mood. Now, some people say, well, if you want your mood to change, then act different. Well, I I'm not into that. Uh, for numerous reasons that if you've been watching my videos, you probably follow. Uh, for one thing, my mood is not my main concern in my life. When I write my memoirs, hopefully many, many years from now, when I'm very old, I'm not going to be very concerned with, oh, I was in this mood, and oh, I was in that mood. I'm really more concerned with life out here. All, 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 the, all this stuff that's out here and around me is really what I want to be concerned about. And when my mood tends to turn inward, um, sometimes that can be useful. However, often it's infertile. So I don't base my life around, oh, I want to be in a different mood. So that's not why I'm suggesting doing this. I'm suggesting that if you want to do certain things, well, why don't we get on with it and do it regardless of what mood we happen to be in? And yes, in the process of doing it, you may notice that I'm brightening up a little bit as I go. If Those of you who are keen clinicians may notice that um, my, my facial attributes and my vocal tone are brightening up a little bit as I go. But that's not really why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I think this intrinsically is important. Okay, what was number two? So along with a low mood comes uh, maybe a little bit of a loose cognitive state. Uh, so number one was, number one, and I have a heck of a time with this reversal, number one was you don't have to act the same as your mood. Uh, and uh, gosh, I must have had a number two, but I don't think I'm going to stop the video to co go back and look at it. So I'm just going to stop for a moment and you're going to see in action cognitive flexibility. It can be done. So I'm going to go right on. Some of the other things I wanted to tell you about were that having a low mood is something that's internal and that what we tend to do naturally is confuse it with stuff that's external. So that discrimination of, oh, this is happening in me versus this is something that is an attribute of the world is kind of an important distinction to make. Uh, <clears throat> it's a lot simpler than trying to examine every thought for whether it's rational or not. It's rather parsimonious, it's rather elegant. Let's notice the difference between inner experience and and what's out there between mental and emotional experience 
and the five senses and, and what we can perceive through the five senses that's out there. And chances are the things that we care about most in our life that are the sorts of things we would want to write about in our memoirs when we're very old are out there. This mood is in here. Now, when we confuse this, we might say things like, oh, wow, the world sucks. Uh, that gets a lot of hits, by the way. My life sucks, or the world sucks. These, these Google searches get a lot of hits, I've discovered, uh, poking around with various different search terms. So a lot of people do feel that way. Um, the world is the world. <laughs> Whether it's good or bad, I don't know. But I do know that when I happen to be in a, a good mood, so-called, then the world seems like a nice place. So when I happen to be in a low mood, well, then the world seems like a crummy place. And I'm thinking that the world is not changing so much between these two states. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that the changes are happening in me and that I'm throwing them out there on the world. The word to project, the old psychology word, psychoanalytic word to project means to throw out. And I'm projecting that out on the world. So um, if, if we're mindful of it, we can notice when we're doing that. And we can be discerning and notice that the, these mood states are internal and they don't necessarily have to influence the way we behave in the external world. What I think I'll do, since I think I'm going to like this video, I like a lot of the things that I just said, is I think I'm going to call this a keeper. And then I'm going to do part two, which will allow me to go back, find out what on earth I was going to say with point two and point three, uh, and then finish the video in part two of the video. Maybe it should be part B. So part of a low mood will be indecisiveness. So we're just going to work with that, and we're going to continue. See you in a minute for part B, or two, or to be, or not to be.